Hello and welcome to another watercolour painting demonstration with myself, Stephen Crowley. This is just clear water doing over the paper. It's 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper. And then I'm just going to go a bit of raw sienna, a bit of cad yellow. We've got um, like a, a woodland scene. I'm just mixing those two colours together. Moving that all the way down the bottom of the page. No real, it's quite haphazard only apart from that I'm conscious of these little white bits that I'm leaving because they will be our uh, main sort of light source coming through the scene. Just dip slightly into a bit of ultramarine there just to darken it slightly. I'll do over this again in a little bit. Just come all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm introducing a bit of ultramarine to darken these sort of what will be like the shadowy areas when it's all done also it's just like mass background foliage got some light down there so i don't want to grow that too much little bits uh, these will be like the leaves and that there's no real detail at this stage so this is just various mixes of green and what i'll do is put some sort of path in the foreground there and now i'm just concentrating on lights and darks I just want to get a few lot of shadowy areas, just darken this slightly. And then once I finish with this high brush, I'll use the rig out just to put in a few little trunks here and there. Right, so that's the sort of mass background flavour. So next I'm doing cab yellow and a bit of ultramarine. More water, it's got a bit dry. A bit of water just to loosen everything up. And then I'm just flicking up. And these are the most distant trees, right, right furthest away. A bit more paint. A few more on the right hand side. There's no water this time, so I've got to worry about reflections. Just flicking them up. A bit more water, a bit more paint. Get a few there, right in the in the lit area. A few more down that side, a few more on this side. And what that is, as the paper's drying, I'll, I'll keep putting these layers on. There'll be two or three different layers. And it'll just go on thicker and thicker and stronger and stronger times. Don't want to do it too dark because then it won't look the shadows won't stand out too well. Um, what I will do, see the paper's just coming away from the board slightly. Just a piece of plywood I've got this paper clipped to. So paper's stretching, so I'm just going to pull it flat against the board. So it's tight against the board, just so I've got that water gathering at the bottom of the paper, and then we're good to go again. So another layer going on. This time I'm going to use the brush, the big brush. So I'm adding a bit of burnt umber to the same cab yellow ultramarine mix and let's put them on you'll see how they're going a bit thicker now see now it's going on a little bit stronger these ones are closer to us and they're pushing those ones further and further back into the distance do a few on this side just using a chisel edge you just need to dip the tips of the brush into the water just to bring all the airs together Dip the tips in, just enough water to hold the airs together because you don't want any more than that because otherwise the, the mix will just be too watery. There'll be paint dripping all over the place and you'll be getting so frustrated. Yeah, that's all part of Just keep practicing because once, once you get the, uh, the hang of it, it is worth it. It's a cracking brush once you get used to it. A few twigs I think. So I've gone back to the rigger brush. Coming down, too dry, a bit more water. I just pop a few little twigs and branches going here and there, all over the place. A few more down there. Some cutting straight across into that lit area. A few more on this side. A few to the left, a few to the right, a few up, a few down. Just a sort of mass of twigs and branches going all over the place. Don't worry about that. 
few things on the floor as well. And there's not much paint on the brush, that's why I know I can do this, and I'm not going to create too much. It just looks like, well, it just looks like nothing basically, doesn't it? It's as dry now, so it's not actually coming up. So that's what I'll call the second layer. Now at this point, I'm just going to use a clean, damp brush. A little bit of yellow on there. And I'm just going to try and define now the, the, the way, where the lamb's coming. So, so it will just... Not much happening, that's, that's pretty on the flat, I think. There's, there's no big hills or anything in the distance. Um, and again, this. Let's, put it, let's just slope in slightly up, I think, down there. I don't want it all flat like that, just, just to angle it a little bit, get a bit of a rise. So. And then I want to sort of sweep so there's a path. It's going to sort of sweep like that. So that'll be the, the edge there. And it's sweeping around here like that, and it's going to you know, do it up there like that. And then it sweeps around, around the corner, and it goes round, something like that. Something like that. So we've, we've got a sort of better layout now, everything's working. Um, so now we need some more trees. I'm going to well, because I'm going dark now. If I've got light colours there's no need to clean your brush. I've just dipped the corner in just to loosen everything up. I'm going to go a bit of brown, a bit of blue, throw a bit of yellow in it as well. A nice dark mix. Something like that. Now I'm going to put some big, big thick trees in there. So let's have one there, up there like that. Um, uh, another one there, like that, let's do up there. Bring that one down a little bit lower. I don't want them all level, you know what I mean? Just some are closer, some are further away. Don't put them all nice and parallel and symmetrical. It just won't look natural. Let's have another one there, like that. I'm, I don't want to paint over, obviously, anything at this stage of the light in the distance, so I'm just avoiding any nice little happy accidents that I've done, or maybe it wasn't even in, intentional. If, I'm, if I am that good. Stop one across there like that and then another one up there like that. And then one, then one. Don't press down too hard unless they're in the foreground. The lighter you touch, the thinner it'll come like these. Um, yeah, I think I'm fairly... Maybe let's have a... I'm going... Round the back of there, something like that, I think. That'll do. Right, next foliage. I'm just going to make sure this pipe is flat against the board. And I'm going to use a bit of dry brushwork with the, with the hate brush. Put in a few leaves. So let's clean the brush. Squeeze all the water out of it. Just get your thumb and finger in there. Scuff it up on the tea towel. You can use an old brush if you want. I just use the same brush all the time. I know that's why they wear eggs and cook, I don't know. So you've got hairs like that, and I'm just bashing them in into the yellow first. And because it's dry, it's not going to block it in. So you'll, you'll see plenty of gaps. You'll be able to see all the stuff in the background. If it's too wet, You'll put it on in great big dollops. You won't be able to see anything behind. So let's just come down into that this area. Down there. So a few like this. Let's sort of drain these a bit. Like that. Let's come down like that in the middle and then down the corner. Something like so. I was going to sweep in the path, but I might just leave it as it is. Nice yellowy colour. I don't think I need to. It's hard to say. It turns too late. I might just leave it as is. For, well, see how we go on. See how we go on. At this point, I'm going to a bit of ultramarine, so the, the greens now go a little bit darker. So 
see. In that day for those areas. It's more dark there. And dark round there. Let's have a bit of round there. Put up there. So it's just slowly taking shape. I don't just bash it in haphazardly. It's like here, I'll dip there, and then I'll dip there, and then I'll dip there. I never just went like that because it just looked a total mess. You can see the sort of way the land that sort of slopes it like that, and that just goes around there like that. And this comes around here like that. So I think I'm fairly happy with that. Let's put some shadows on those trunks. So for the shadows, I'm bothered cleaning the brush. I've gone brown, red, and blue. And then I'm getting enough blue in there, just so the mix is sort of leaning towards blue rather than brown or red. It needs. The mix, you know, I mean, it needs to be dark enough so that you can see, but not too dark because you need to be able to see what's underneath. So um, the light, I'm just going to, the light's just coming from up there, like that, so I'm just going to follow these. Darken those a little bit, make them a bit more silhouette -y. Oh, it's coming down there like that. It's sort of popping over there, it's coming across there like that. It's coming down there like that. I'm assuming he's there, these shadows. I'm just, I'm just sort of making, making these shadows up as I go along. And then sort of walk about there like that. Remember they're not giving straight line, they're sort of giving up and down as they're following the following the land. Something like so. Sort of I think I'm nearly nearly there. Just have a few little shadow bits around there. Dark areas around there. Maybe just shadowy bits up in the treetops. Shadowy things down there. I think before I go too mad, shall I stick? figures just walking off. bird in the sky somewhere that's sticking today he's going to be there just about to see him and then last but not least I'm going to stick my name down there and call this one finished so let's see what it looks like with the main sun so here we are with the main sun so if we go and have a closer look at it sort of background colour, it's just various mixes of green 
brushed in from either side, carefully preserving. I did mention it in commentary, I was watching these little lit areas here, carefully preserving them. Reason being, they're acting as our like, most intense light sources coming through the scene. So you've got various mixes of cadmium yellow, ultramarine, a little bit of raw sienna in there as well. And then whilst the paper was still wet, the first trees, you can just see these faint ones here, put in when the paper was still fairly wet. So they've sort of softened off. See, they go very light in tone, pushes them right back into the distance. Then we've got our second layer, which was like ones like this one, put in with the hay brooks, but it was still wet. So they've still lightened off. They're like the middle distant trees. And then the third layer, like these ones, put in with the strongest tone. You can see I've deliberately pushed these ones against this lit area there, just for the maximum amount of contrast. Same on this side, see? Maybe this one here might have looked even better if it was pushed straight across there, just to make it even more dramatic. See all this dry brushwork here? Just clean, just using a, a very dry, clean height brush, dabbed into the colours. Just gives the impressions of an easy, simple way of painting loads of leaves on mass. Then we've got all our shadows coming down from the trees, a few more here on the left hand side, and then also a few little shadowy areas scattered amongst the lights here, just to vary it. See for me, the key to a good landscape, you've got to have shadowy areas and really well lit areas, and then everything else in between, just to get the maximum amount of variation. And then we've got our little couple um, taking a woodland stroll providing a focal point. So that's it for this painting, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, keep practicing, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.